One challenge that we have in the PC world is that anybody can make hardware. There are a number of, of environments. Apple, of course, makes their own hardware. They have a very tight control of exactly what type of hardware is created for their platforms. But the PC market's very different. Anybody can make hardware, and almost everybody seems to. And so you can have all kinds of different printers, all kinds of different video cards, a lot of different options for sound. And so you get in these situations where if you upgrade an operating system, can my operating system even support that piece of hardware? Is there a driver in the new operating system for that particular sound card? So yeah, keep this in mind. It may work fine on the existing operating system. You upgrade, it doesn't work anymore because there's not a driver. You have to think about that. You may have to get a new sound card. You may have to get new components that are supported in the new operating system. Now, fortunately, Microsoft has thought of this. And you can go out to the Microsoft website and look at their hardware compatibility list. And they just have listed out everything for you to help you decide is the existing hardware you have something that will work? Or if you're thinking of buying new hardware, are you thinking of buying something that we know is going to work in this operating system? There's also something called the Upgrade Advisor. There's one for Windows XP. There's one for Vista. If you want to just put the CD-ROM in your computer and boot from that media, this is the screen you get at the beginning. And one of the options there is to check system compatibility. And it goes through and just checks your system by itself. You can also go to the Windows website and download the Upgrade Advisor. The one for Vista is really useful. So you've got Windows XP, and you're wondering, will this work in Vista, you can go out and download that Vista Upgrade Advisor, and it will tell you right then. We've checked all of your hardware. We've checked it against our list. And we know that this particular hardware will work, and maybe this particular hardware will not. So you now can now make a decision on whether you want to upgrade or not to that new operating system. Network connectivity is just integrated into our operating systems these days. So during the upgrade process, you will be asked, is this computer going to be part of a work group or will it be part of a domain? And if so, what's the work group name and what's the domain name? And you, what name do you want to put on the computer itself? So you may be asked for those things. If you're working at home, well, you can make up your own work group and your own name for the computer. But if you're in an enterprise environment, a corporate environment, where you are on a Windows domain, you're going to need to have some of this information. And your domain administrator will have to administratively add that computer to the domain. You just can't bring in any computer and have it part of your network. There are methods in place with the Windows domain process to prevent anything like that from happening. So some extra administrative tasks you may have to do. We mentioned that the file system is pretty important. You may want to run a FAT32 file system so you're more compatible with other operating systems that might be out there. Or if you'd like to run NTFS and have all of the latest capabilities available in Windows available because you're using the latest file system that comes with Microsoft Windows. The options are there uh, if you're using other operating systems, like an Apple operating system, you're running Linux on another machine, you want to be able to share files without a problem, you may want to consider using FAT32 rather than NTFS. And lastly, if you're planning on supporting dual boot capabilities on your computer where you are running Windows XP and running Windows Vista on the same machine, you simply reboot into the other operating system, you may want to set up separate partitions for that. So that you may want to make some, some decisions right out of the gate that we're going to split this hard drive in two pieces. One side of that's going to be Windows XP. The other side is going to be Vista. Or you may just make the decision that everything goes onto the same computer. There are some challenges there from being able to keep things straight, being able to keep the system files from conflicting with each other. Their sanity may be at stake. So it's just something to keep in mind during this process. Maybe worth doing some research and Googling what you're trying to do and see if other people have done it before. If you work a lot with installing operating systems, you're certainly familiar with just grabbing a CD or DVD with that media and putting it into your computer or plugging it in via a USB drive and booting from that. And that's your boot media that you use. Now, the media itself, especially optical media, can be relatively slow, however. So this may not be the fastest way to install an operating system, but it's certainly one that's easy because you can take your media with you wherever you go on anybody's computer, slide in your DVD or your CD, and now you're able to boot from that media and install the operating system. But there's other options as well. You can have on that particular installation, have it set up so you don't have to answer any questions. And you'll, you'll see when we go through our video on installing an operating system, 
You're asked a lot of questions during the installation. Maybe you'd like to decide well before time what the name of this computer is going to be, what network it's going to be on, what its IP address's configuration is going to be, what the name of it is, what work group does it belong to. You can put that all into a file called unattend.txt. There's a format for this file that you can find on Microsoft's website where you simply fill in the blanks. Then you can start your installation with a special command line, and it will use that unattend.txt, and you can walk away. And when you come back, everything's already completed. It's like magic. Now, if you are working in a facility and you have a lot of different machines and you don't want to have to take the media with you, you could perform some, a remote installation of the operating system where it's unattended. You can do it from a distance. It's called remote installation services, something from Microsoft. And that makes it so you don't have to fly to another place to install an operating system. You can install it on a separate machine and you don't even have to be there. There's also something called SysPrep or drive imaging. It's a combination of different things where you can take the configuration of a machine and duplicate not just the files and file structure of that machine. You can also duplicate all the settings as well. There are a lot of also third-party drive imaging programs that you can use for this. And so that you can essentially create a snapshot of exactly one computer, take it to another, and simply load that snapshot onto that machine. And you've essentially duplicated or imaged those two systems. They're exactly the same as each other. That only works, of course, if the hardware between these systems is relatively close to being the same. Uh, Windows can have problems if you take one configuration and you take it to another computer that's vastly different, you may run into problems. So not something you do across very diverse types of hardware, but certainly across similar types of hardware, it works very, very nicely. We're almost ready to install our operating system. Let's see what we've learned about the process. For the Windows installation, before we do the upgrade, what is the first thing we should perform before we do anything else? And if you know me, you know that's backing up your system. Make sure that it, no matter what happens with your upgrade, no matter what happens with your installation, you can always go back to the way things were. Second question, what file systems are the most common in the Windows operating system? There are a couple that are extremely common. We see them all the time, and they are. FAT32 and NTFS. And our last question, what installation method uses answers from a text file to automatically step through the entire installation? You don't even have to be there to answer any questions. And just like that implies, it's an unattended installation method. Well, that covers everything we need to know about planning our Windows installation of backing up, verifying hardware, making sure that our hardware is going to work properly, and all the different options we have to actually do the installation. If you'd like to watch any of our other a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, and a lot more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.